yeah, you look at Sydney Uni, uh, the history and the success of the club, and I think it's really exciting for the um, women's program to, to sort of start this year. Um, I was talking to someone earlier, and it's the last sport in the Sydney Uni sort of sport um, thing to go women and men together. So I think it's it's a step in the right direction. And um, yeah, the Uni's team that was uh, before, like the, the girls' team, probably needed some help. So I'm, I'm excited to um, jump on board and, and hopefully have a successful um, year with the Sydney Uni team. It's so great to just dive into that community aspect that we're searching for here at Uni. Um, you know diverse culture, gender equality, and, and really embrace that community aspect. It's gonna be great having people like Phoebe coming down on Sunday, um, you know, getting people down at uni number one and, and celebrating that as a club. It's gonna be awesome. So I'm really looking forward to it this year. This is a huge moment um, in, in university sport here at Sydney Uni. Um, the presence of women in cricket dates back here to the 1920s and 30s. Um, our first ever test captain and our second ever test captain played cricket here at Sydney Uni while they were studying, so Margaret Peden and Molly Dive. But a formal merger with the men's club, this is very new. Um, I helped start University's Women's Cricket Club 20 years ago. That's been a wonderful opportunity to grow women's cricket, but this is taking it that next step and looking at the long-term um, prosperity of, of women's cricket in this region and also linked to the university. And, uh, you know, what better club to, to link with? A, one of the oldest clubs in Australia, perhaps the world, some wonderful people involved and the leadership is very impressive here at, at Sydney Uni Cricket Club. So, um, yeah, look, from the women's point of view, we're really excited. Yeah, I think it's probably just a logical step. Um, you look at maybe the strongest women's clubs around Sydney uh, and they're just tied to really strong cricket clubs. Maybe Penrith and Manly come to mind for me. Um, and we have had a really strong presence in the men's competition for a long time now. So coming under the one banner just makes sense. And I think as Alex is alluding to, the timing's right. The time is right for us to do this as a club and probably as women's sport and women's cricket's absolutely exploding at the moment. So um, very exciting time for, for all of us. My dad played when he was younger. Um, I also grew up across the road from the cricketing oval, so it's pretty natural progression for me to just jump across there and, and play with mates. So from that perspective, that's how I got into it. Um, I'd say major role models, probably Shane Watson, um, all-rounder, bats, bowls, and yeah, just awesome to watch. So that was probably my role model. Dad and my older brother sort of inspired me to start cricket. Um, and. Fortunately, I enjoyed it and uh, sort of started watching, you know, Elise Perry, Elisa Healy and um, sort of modelled my game around them. But yeah, I think it's really exciting to think that um, now the platform we're in, we can inspire that next gen. My role models growing up were the Wall Brothers. Uh, my twin sister and I played cricket out in the country um, in the Riverina. We did go on to play cricket for Australia together and there were no women on TV. Um, playing for us to sort of idolise. So, of course, being twins, we idolised the, the War Brothers. Um, also, Belinda Clark, who I met as a maybe a 13-year-old out at a school holiday cricket camp in Orange. That was a pivotal moment for me, and she's been my cricket hero ever since that time. Yeah, I was actually a massive uh, Mark War fan myself. So. Similar Pro, age. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm a little bit <laughs> older. Maybe than, a little bit older. A little bit older than you. Yeah. I, I saw his later work. You might okay. have seen his earlier work. Yeah. Um, but I come from a, a family full of boys that played cricket. We sort of, I had Mark Warm, my older brother had Steve Warm, my younger brother had Ricky Ponning. So we sort of had the Australian Middle Order there. Um, loved watching, you know, that dominant era growing up. But then as I actually came to Sydney University, I sort of started to meet professional players for the first time when I was 17 and 18. So Ed Cowan, Greg Mayall. Uh, Mark Cameron, guys who sort of, you know, you get to peer behind the veil of, oh, what's a professional cricketer do and what are they like? And for me, that was a really uh, empowering situation to be in because you have moments, they were far better than me, um, but moments where you could match it with them on the field or, you know, they might give you the old compliment here and then you think, oh, maybe I could do this. Um, so that was, you know, landing here and crossing paths with those particular guys uh, was, critically important for my cricket and probably wouldn't have played professionally without those guys in this club. 
Yeah, I can probably speak to that um, better than most considering it kind of turned my life around in that sense. Um, I came to uni, uh, you know, grade cricket was, was the be all and end all for me and it kind of helped me through, um, you know, progress through the grades. They have an elite athlete program here which kind of upskills everyone in all facets of life and university as well. Um, so that really helped me balance everything out to give cricket a really red hot crack and um, you know, I'm just embracing that moving forward. It was awesome. Totally agree. I think the uni and sport balance um, is provides so many opportunities for, for you know young kids coming through the ranks, and um, it's a really exciting sort of location. You know, we can feed into the inner west, and, and all the girls that live around here can inspire them to come to unis and hopefully study one day as well. Being linked with sport at a university, there's many benefits, especially when you're studying here on campus. Um, the, being able to link with the elite athlete program. There are some financial scholarships, not, not many people are able to achieve that level, but just that support around helping maintain your elite sport and your academics and be able to progress through and, and actually achieve your degree at the end of the day. It might take a little bit longer, but um, yeah, the, any elite athlete program at the various unis around Australia, um, so important to keep um, that balance, I think, in our young sports people. I, I'm a big advocate for having something else going on, um, if you can. Yeah, when, when you see women's cricket where it is now, it's a packed calendar and it's very challenging for our elite um, female cricketers to complete their degrees like they once did, you know, when, when I was playing. So, um, yeah, any support you can get to, to achieve that ac academic side is, is so crucial. For the male side of it, Hayden Kerr might be our most recent example here of someone who mightn't have come through that conventional under 19, 17's pathway and sort of flown in as a rookie. Um, he came here, engaged with the resources and the facilities we've got, you know, started to dominate club cricket and make statements there and got his opportunity basically as he was finishing his Masters of Physiotherapy. So it's almost the best of all worlds. Um, you'd love to get those opportunities when you're younger but I guess what I'm saying is that this what we have here um, allowed him to almost train like a professional semi-professional alongside his studies and really keep cricket as a firm focus uh, as opposed to um, maybe other situations where that just falls down a priority or two down your list mm -hmm. and at that point you're really not going to make it because it is so cutthroat to, to push through and you know, for me, Hayden Kerr, looking at him, he's the prototype of a young athlete who, you know, you would you'd use as the poster boy for a club like this. Yeah, I think it's it's so cool. I think I've chosen the, the best time to sort of come through women's sport at the moment. It's um, yeah, going really well and. Um, yeah, in terms of the cricketing space, I think it's, it's just going from strength to strength and you see more clubs in Sydney popping up and, um, you know, the competitiveness is, is growing and the, the standard is getting better. So it's really exciting and, um, yeah, it's been a pleasure to sort of watch this game grow. I've seen a lot of change um, across 15 years playing for Australia and 18 years playing for New South Wales. Um, I think, you know, where the game is now uh, is a result of investment in our sport uh, and to have competitions like the WBBL um, have really transformed our, our, our game. So um, yeah, I think so exciting to see Phoebe Litchfield here. We've been able to recruit her across uh, to join the club and I had the privilege of being there for her WBBL debut. Um, to see what is possible for young Phoebe is um, just remarkable but she knows the value of club cricket and I know that she's really excited to be able to have an impact on the women and men at, at Sydney Uni.